This month, we have been talking about practicing. In life, we are all practicing something. Maybe you are practicing a sport. I've been practicing running. Maybe some of you are practicing your math skills or reading skills or the piano or the violin. We have also been talking about practicing things that help us to grow in God. A few weeks ago, we talked about practicing loving God and loving others. Then we talked about putting into practice what we hear from God when we read his word, the Bible. We practiced praying a few weeks ago and we learned about how to talk to others about God. Today, we are going to learn one last thing in this series. And the question we are going to ask is, how can you put all of that into practice and how can you live for God? Jesus tells an amazing story about a widow in Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Now one time, Jesus was sitting by the temple and was watching the people come and put in their offering. Imagine, imagine what if Jesus was sitting in our service, watching us put our offering in. Anyway, most of the people there were bringing these large amounts of coins. The people were probably hoping that those around them would notice how much money they were putting in. But then, this poor widow came up to the offering, and all she had were two small coins, but she dropped them into the offering. Jesus looked at the widow, and he said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. This poor widow has given more than all the others who were making offerings, for they gave a tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she had to live on. Wow, I wonder what Jesus meant. I mean, how could two tiny coins be worth more than all of the offerings that the others were given? Well, the thing that stands out about this passage is that the widow gave all she had. The others were giving a lot of money in their amount, but they were not giving out of the fullness of their hearts. It was a duty for them. And they were giving with the hope of someone else seeing how much they were giving. They actually could have made a bigger sacrifice to give, even more than they did, but they didn't. But the widow gave only two small coins. It was a very tiny amount, but it was all she had. And she was willing to give it with a happy heart for God to use. Now this story can be about our money and if we are willing to let God use our money for his plans, but it's also about so much more than that. Just as the widow gave what she had, so can you and me. But the question is, what do we have to give to God? How about time? Instead of playing video games, maybe you can spend time praying with someone or volunteer your time to help someone in your neighborhood who needs it. Or what about talent? What is something that you are good at? Are you good at singing? Or being able to tell when someone is in need? Are you good at listening? Or even talking? Are you good at fixing things or building things? Do you have lots of energy? Believe it or not, you can use these talents to live for God. If you're good at singing, try singing at church or even leading your family in a worship song. If you're good at being able to see when someone is in need, try doing something to help someone, like carry the groceries in for your mom, or maybe buy food for the person asking on the corner. If you're good at listening, you can listen to someone share their fears or their prayer requests. And if you're good at talking, you know who you are, you can use your words to be an encouragement or a comfort or to bring joy to someone today. Maybe you're a leader. Do people look up to you? 
Do they come to you naturally for advice or follow your example? Are you the captain of a team? Or maybe the room helper at your school? If you are, then ask yourself this question. How can I lead others toward Jesus and good deeds? And lastly, if you're that kid who has a ton of energy and can't sit down for more than five seconds, then I want to ask you, what are some ways that you can use that energy to serve God? All of these things put together bring up our final point for this series, which is that we can practice living for God. God can use our strengths, our weaknesses, our talents, all to help others learn to know Him and to help us grow closer to Him and stronger in our faith. So the big question that I have for you today is, how can you live for God? What do you have? Time, talent, seeing needs, listening, talking, leading, energy. My challenge for you this week is to pick one or two of these things, or a different one if you can think of it, and decide a few ways that you can put them into practice this week to show others God's love or to grow closer to Him. So let's be like the widow this week and give back to God out of the fullness of our hearts. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for teaching us this whole month on how we can practice to learn to grow in you. You've shown us how to love you and love others, how to learn from your word, how to pray, how to share our faith, and I pray that you would teach us now how to use the gifts and talents that you have given us so that we can serve you and help others to know that you love them as well as grow closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, it has been awesome being with you today. And I just want to make sure you know that we meet on campus at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday. I hope to see you there.